In the current era of genre and hearing, procedurally generated titles being released at assembly line speed, it was only a matter of time before a developer began to swim against the current. Little Dragon's Cafe creates the illusion of an open sandbox, but really it's a genre-busting, character-driven experience carefully scripted with a purpose. A few elements like a rhythm game, asset management and exploration are intermixed to add some spice, but the meat of the experience is to become emotionally invested in the wonderful cast of misfits that try to keep a cafe running on a daily basis. Life at the cafe begins on a sad note, unfortunately. A pair of siblings, Rin and Ren, live and work with their mother at the Little Dragon Cafe. After finishing their chores, they head off to bed, unaware that their mother has been feeling ill as of late. The next morning, try as they might, the pair are unable to awaken their mother from her sleep. Just as they begin to descend into despair, a strange wizard arrives to explain that their mother is actually half-dragon, and that her ongoing sleep is due to the incompatibility between her human and dragon blood. The premise is a bit far-fetched, but no less so than the prescribed cure for the mother's illness being to grow and care for an actual dragon. Not quite understanding what's happening, the brother and sister team attempt to continue the family business while raising the newly hatched dragon. Luckily though, some assistance shows up in their hour of need. A trio of characters arrive at the cafe for various reasons, but all become happily or begrudgingly employed. It's these three characters that truly steal the show. Even though you choose to play as either Rin or Ren, the siblings become something closer to a spectator, while Billy, Empanima, and Lucola are front and center in most of the interactions. Billy, or Beatnik Link as I've grown to call him, closely represents a stereotypical millennial. He arrives at the cafe without a purpose, feeling out of place in the world. He left his hometown and has now found himself waiting tables after trying to skip out on his bill. The hardworking Empanima travels to the cafe in the hopes of learning the skills necessary to open her own establishment one day. Her biggest hurdle though is her temper. She casually mentions the damage caused at previous employers after she turns into a white-haired lunatic that tosses plates at her source of frustration. The most helpful of the three is probably Lucola, the not-quite-yet world-famous chef. He's so enamored with the cafe that he decides to stay as the head chef in order to fine-tune his skills. All three have wonderful personalities that are explored as each day passes. To progress through the game, three elements will need to be equally considered. Dragon growth, cafe reputation, and guest visitations. Taking care of your dragon is probably the easiest part. He'll follow you wherever you go, whether that's inside taking care of customers or outside searching for ingredients. The stamina gauge is the main concern. As his stamina begins to drop, you'll need to provide the dragon with food to revitalize it. Dishes to serve him are always in supply, so the only thing that you really need to worry about is to make sure that you're petting them on a regular basis and giving hugs when they've been a good dragon. Cafe reputation is based on how well you can manage the cafe. A healthy balance of exploring the island searching for new recipes and ingredients has to be weighed against helping the staff serve customers during the busy periods. Lunch and dinner are the two busiest times of the day, so I often found myself searching the island in the mornings and afternoons, and then quickly returning when the indicator advised me of its lacking staff. Thankfully, you can fast travel back to the cafe from anywhere on the island. You'll find yourself doing this often as staff become distracted from their duties quite easily. Billy will shirk his duties in order to practice guitar, while Impanima will become frustrated until she can be talked down. Another major impact on cafe reputation is the quality of meals on the menu. A star meter indicates the quality of each dish, with the recipe and the ingredients used in the meal determining the amount of stars. Recipes and ingredients have fluctuating levels of quality, so it's paramount that you explore the island to make sure that you always have the best available supplies for your cafe. Once the ingredients are selected for the meal, a rhythm game is played in order to determine how well the meal was prepared. Five levels of quality are determined by the amount of notes you hit just right. Only a few number of songs represent the many meals available, so you'll often find yourself repeating a previous rhythm. They aren't particularly long, so mastering the exercise is quite easy. Finding the ingredients and preparing meals is not enough though. You and the staff will need to take orders, serve the trays, and clean tables in an orderly fashion to ensure customer satisfaction. It's a process that feels a little tedious early on when few customers are entering the cafe, but can become total chaos when enough customers have shown up to fill the place up. Probably the best part of Little Dragon's Cafe is exploring the island with your little dragon buddy. The island is huge, and new areas become available as your dragon grows and learns new abilities. The landscape is beautiful, and the only downside is that there is some jankiness while in dock mode. A day one patch does address the issue in handheld mode, but the issue is still prevalent while I was playing on the TV. I think it would have been nice to have a map that fills in after you've explored a region of the island, but it felt less necessary as each day passed, as many of the areas began to set into memory. As fun and as wonderful it is to maintain the cafe, the true experience is the character-driven narrative. A steady stream of guests arrive at the cafe, 
each with a set of problems that it's up to the staff to help them through. Each of the characters have an underlying message to their plot that takes shape over a several day period and comes to a crescendo with a meal from their past that reminds them of better days. The message is never too complicated, whether you're appreciating what you've got or learning not to be a bigoted racist. Seriously, that's in there. The enjoyment comes from the interaction between guests and the staff. The dialogue is well written and all of the stories are genuinely interesting. With so many elements playing out, it's hard to really put my finger on what makes Little Dragon's Cafe so great. It's quite remarkable with all the different elements that each aspect is enjoyable in its own way. The exploration will satisfy the adventure crowd. The asset management of finding ingredients and developing better meals will please the RPG fans. It will melt time away as you push to complete just one more day before going to bed, but values your time because there aren't very many wasted moments. It's a complete package that's hand tailored to be consumed as intended by the developers, and they've really delivered a refreshing experience.